What's up, everyone? <laughs> Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 404. As Kim pointed out, that's the error, cor error code. That's hard to episode. say. Say that it again. Sh shockingly hard to say. Error code. You're better at it. <laughs> much, much better at it. Huge show tonight. Not only are we giving away a race entry to the incredible rut mm. in Montana, but our guest is also from Montana and just, I don't know, one Western states. No big deal. No big deal. The amazing Adam Peterman is going to be joining us on the show tonight. We're going to chat with him all about what it took to get to that finish line first this last weekend. And it being his fifth ultra, 100-mile debut, hasn't been done at Western State since, I believe, 1986. That's what they were saying. It's going to be an awesome show with an awesome guest. I'm so excited to welcome you all to GRL. The show begins now. Ginger Runner. Yay! What is up, everyone? <laughs> Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 404. We appreciate you taking some time out of your busy Wednesdays to spend a little bit of it with us. Nice job, Nayland Day. Caught it as I was saying it, because, you know, I thought it was a Tuesday there for a second. It's Wednesday. We appreciate you uh, joining us today. We have a very, very special guest who's currently on the road traveling back from Western States 100. It is the winner, the champion of the 2022 Western States 100. Adam Peterman is going to be joining us on the show tonight. Talk about like all-star guest right after making history. I'm yes. super excited. But not only is it Adam and myself, there is also the wonderful Kim. Hello, Kim. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Doing well. Good. Hi, everyone. Kim Shima Newberry here as always. If you're new, come say hi in the chat. I will be there throughout the hour. And of course, like always, if you have questions for our wonderful guests, please ask them there. Before we start every show, we like to uh, thank some individuals. That is the GR crew. It is because of them that we're able to do these live broadcasts every single week and bring on guests. It's also because of them that we're able to do all of our reviews, our films, everything like that. If you would like to join the GR crew, all you have to do is head on over to patreon.com slash the ginger runner. All tiers get access to some really fun perks, including tonight's after show with Adam Peterman. So if there's questions that you have that don't get asked during the main show, head on over to our after show, join the crew, and it's a very easy way to interact with our guests week after week. One individual in particular at that top tier we like to shout out as well during Ginger Runner Live, that is Brian Sands. He's a, an amazing human, ultra runner, runner, has a really inspiring journey, uh, his journey running his first marathon, losing 100 pounds in the process of training and stuff. He's, he's just been such a wonderful support to our community, so shout out to Brian. And in addition, uh, we've had this awesome sponsor for the last few weeks of Ginger Runner Live tonight uh, is no different on X backcountry. They are a backcountry app that you can download. You can use to, you know, look at different routes and trails. You can drive to the trailhead, click a trail. It gives you all the stats. It gives you the elevation change and it color grades the, uh, the percent of vert and all that good stuff. Um, I did a trail tested with them a couple weeks ago, a video, a new series I'm doing. Uh, we have some more coming up, which is really exciting, mm -hmm. but they've been great. Their app is great. There is a link in the description that will get you 20% off their annual membership. So check that out. In addition, tonight, very special, Onyx is giving away an entry to the Rut 50K or any of the distances. So if you're not ready for the Rut 50K, you can do any of the Rut races. That is courtesy of Onyx Backcountry. We are going to have a trivia contest tonight. We've done it in the past before. But you're going to have to sit tight and wait for that. It's going to come <laughs> towards the end of this episode. Uh, and we'll talk a lot about the Rut, I feel like, tonight. Because Adam just informed us yeah. that he works for the Rut. Like the, it's he, like that's everything his job. is just working out perfectly. It's going to be a great episode. I'm so excited. I think it's time to introduce our incredible guest. Yes. Fresh off of his win, currently traveling home, the one and only Adam Peterman. Yay! <laughs> Hello, my friend. How are you? Oh, so good. Thanks for having me on. This is awesome. This is awesome, man. Like this is, uh, I'll briefly introduce you uh, to those who might not know who you are, but uh, Kim and I basically saw you for the first time and learned about you and how you just kick so much ass. Uh, at the Chuckin' at 50K this year, we were out there to support some friends and some crew members who were running and it's a race up here in Bellingham, Washington. And in first place was this guy named Adam Peterman, and he was running through all these aid stations so freaking fast that Kim and I were like, "There's no way this guy can hold on to this pace." Like at, at Chuckanut, like I mean, we weren't doubting no, you, no. <laughs> but we were blown away. And sure enough, you went on to win that race. Uh, so it's great to have you now on the show after having won a much longer race, yeah. the Western States 100. How are you feeling, my friend? Oh man. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a crazy day. Like, yeah, it was 
so cool to run that far and like just achieve that. It was a huge accomplishment and I'm tired. Like, yeah, <laughs> was, yeah, it's not, uh, I ran, I ran in college for shorter races and yeah, you don't, you don't feel the same after a steeplechase that you do after a hundred miler. That's for sure. I, uh, yeah, every day has been a little bit better, but yeah, like the next day after States, I hardly move. It was actually pretty funny. We were watching the live stream. Huge shout out to Western States and Dylan and Corinne for an amazing yes. live stream. Uh, but the finish line interview was one thing that stuck out to Kim and I, um, and I think the internet, uh, <laughs> how together and coherent you were at the finish. We don't see that regularly. Usually there's like exhaustion and oh Sometimes man, what a day. Vomit. Yeah, there's lots of time there's vomit. <laughs> but you looked like you, you looked hadn't like, yeah. even run. <laughs> <laughs> how, how like now looking back how did you feel right there in that moment well it's crazy because i like i felt really good at the end like that last mile was awesome i felt great like finishing on the track was like so cool so euphoric um and i remember finishing and like sitting down with dylan and corinne was the first time i'd sat down all day like <laughs> i hadn't sat in a chair at an aid station yeah so i was like i was pretty relieved for that um but i remember i was like dang like i feel i feel great um but in typical fashion for me, like that's how it goes. Like I finished the race and the first 10 minutes after have been like awesome. Mm -hmm. And then it's like deep downward spiral, like very quickly. Um, Cause I remember getting up from that interview and like they, they immediately, they immediately like whisk you away to the drug testing. Yeah. And like before I even made it off the track, I was like dry heaving. And then by the med tent, I'm like, <laughs> just in my shorts with like three blankets and a cot and like just shivering. So oh. although it may have looked good at the interview, <laughs> 15 minutes later, things had gone so bad. <laughs> it, okay. I feel a little relief. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> having run a hundred before, I know what I felt like at the finish. And I, I mean, I was pieces of a human that mm -hmm. people had to put together with duct tape and, and super glue. <laughs> you looked super together, but it does make me feel a little bit better that you did have, I mean, <laughs> Not that I would ever wish this upon you, but so what were those 24 hours like after that? We'll, we'll talk about the race here in just a second, but I am curious, what were those tw first 24 hours after your first hundred like for you? Oh, well, it was such a, it was really unusual experience. Uh, like I said, like first 10 minutes were great. And then like you get to that med tent for drug testing and like, I couldn't believe how bad I was like, how, how rapidly I started to feel bad. Oh, wow. wow. Like, you know, you fill out some paperwork um, and like they give you a bunch of water because they're trying to get like a urine sample. And like, that's hard. Like States is such a hot race. Like it's hard to actually like get enough for the sample. And so they're like really pushing water on you. Um, and yeah, like I just kept getting colder and colder and like they keep adding blankets to me in this cot. And uh, it was kind of a funny moment, like, you know, bit by bit more finishers were coming in. And so like, Hayden comes in and he's like, we all had the same experience. Like everyone walks right. in and then eventually they're all like laying in the cots. Um, God, it, it was like the scene from like a war movie or something. Like me and Hayden were just laying there like in the cots, like talking to each other. And like someone would walk in and you'd like reach your hand out and like <laughs> hold their hand and be like, good job, dude. <laughs> and then you like go back to bed. Um, so yeah, I was, I was actually in the drug testing for quite a while. Um, Unfortunately, dur this is kind of funny. Um, during my first urine sample, while I was peeing in the cup, I, I passed out, like blacked out, oh. which caused me to drop the sample. Oh, no. And I was fine. Like, the guy who was my chaperone like caught me and everything, like, and I was fine. Uh, but it meant that I had to like get another sample. So like two oh. hours go by before I'm ready. And finally, you know, like... I'm out of there by midnight and uh anyway it was all good but yeah i luckily went back to the airbnb and got some sleep and uh made it to the awards the next day and then just slept the rest of the day uh it was yeah pretty low-key day the next day and angela in the chat is saying i love hearing this perspective and it's a good reminder for those of us who aren't at the front of the pack that at events like western states it's obviously important for them to do drug testing so for the elites and the top finishers they don't just get to like get in their car and go somewhere cozy and get some food and get to relax. And sometimes the drug testing, it takes hours, takes hours. and hours. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time, but uh, yeah, I'm so, I'm so glad they do that. I mean, yeah, the more of that in the sport, the better. I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, it, it, 
I've been very fortunate to document various runners at States before. And you, I had like kind of, I don't know if I blacked this part of it <laughs> out, but the finish line with the elites as they're laying in the cots is a sight to see. It's a, it's an interesting thing that not, you know, if you're watching the live stream or if you're following on Twitter, you don't get to see like the winners and the top 10 men and women, they go to a tent and oftentimes they have to lay in the cot and just like regather themselves because of how much output yeah. they've had. Uh, that's crazy to hear that you were also in there experiencing that. Cause again, like what we saw was the post-race interview, which is like, I'm good. That was fun. <laughs> See you later. Oh yeah. Uh, wow. So you experienced all of it then you got it all. It was, I mean, yeah, it, it was crazy. Like, like I said, I felt great. And like, I was the first one in the med tent, but I was also the last man out for the top 10 finishers. Like, cause of, because, uh, cause I dropped the, dropped the sample, but yeah, it was it was crazy in there. I didn't I didn't realize that that's what went on after a hundred mile. Uh, yeah, I wonder if I would have wanted to do it had I known what would happen. In there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're now a few days removed, so you know those first twenty four hours after it are probably some of the most intense, both both emotionally, physically, stuff like that. But what are you, what are you at now? Are you walking around? Are you still going up and down stairs weirdly, or d does that even happen for you? Yeah, I, I feel pretty good, honestly. Like, I think I was probably more sore after canyons. Like, for whatever reason, the canyons 100K, like, blew up my quads. Um, and this, like, nothing's sore on me in that way. Uh, the only thing that's kind of lingering is, like, I really, like, jacked up the top of my right quad. Like, upper, or sorry, calf. Like, upper upper calf or, like, lower part of the hamstring. Um, and that just kind of has a knot in it. So, that's, like, my main complaint now but it doesn't really matter like I, w I was planning on not running all of july anyway so hopefully it just works itself out but no otherwise i feel good like i went for a bike ride today with aaron and um i have to go kind of slow but it was great it's good man it's good that you're getting back to it uh we have tons of live questions from our live viewers mm -hmm. kim you've also pulled a bunch from our discord server what do we got yeah, so you just mentioned maybe not running much for the next month or so. Daniel in the chat room says, uh, you said that you weren't going to race for a bit after this win. The quote was, I'll be fishing and drinking a beer. Where do you yeah. fish and what beer will you drink? Oh, man, uh, my favorite beer is Modelo. Uh, I love craft beers and stuff, but I, I can't. I'm, I'm just lying to myself. I think Modelo I like more than any of them. Uh, and then I live in Montana, so there's a few spots I like to go. Uh, I live in Missoula, so there's plenty of great options. Uh, but the Clark Fork goes right through town, and it's it's actually like really good. And then, yeah, this time of year the smaller streams are better. Sweet. Good I was part. also gonna say some fisher fisher people don't like to give away their secret spots. Fisher yeah, exactly. people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kim's dad. My dad is big into fishing. Yeah. <laughs> avid fisherman, and we'll get photos of like his his daily catch, and it's a. I'll be like, where'd you impressive. go? And he has nicknames for all the places he goes. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I've seen some people where they like have the fish and they're holding in a photo and they've blurred out the background. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, yeah. I mean, especially Montana. <laughs> Montana has some of the best fishing, I mean, in the world, I would I would say. And I can imagine that there's secret spots that only Adam and P Adam Peterman knows or like your local crew knows. Um, so where are those? <laughs> yeah, where are they? Yeah, yeah. 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 My, dad. my dad's the expert. Yeah, I just follow him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe one more live question. And we'll yeah, this, start chatting about and states. yeah, this question comes from our Discord server and it's from Deb Runs Far. And Deb asked, when you won the golden ticket at Canyon's 100K this year, did you have any hesitation at taking the entry into Western states? Yeah, I, I definitely did. Um, mainly because I was I was kind of worried about doing uh, canyons, and up until that point, canyons was the like longest and uh, like longest race I've ever, I'd ever done. So I was definitely worried about like just coming off of canyons and then like immediately gearing up for a much longer race, only right. like seven or eight weeks later. So fortunately, they give you like a two week period to decide. Uh, if you want to take your ticket or not. And so that gave me like a week to not run. And then it gave me a few days to like go on some little test runs to make sure that everything was okay. Um, and that I was like actually like in it for States. So um, yeah, I think I, I took a little over a week and then I just, yeah, I was like too excited about the ticket to turn it down. It's, it's a special thing. Um, it, it, it's clearly an honor to, to be invited, but also to, 
earn that ticket, you know, winning at Canyons and to get that opportunity. We often hear from guests of the show who have earned golden tickets in the past. It, sometimes it can be a tough decision because you have a calendar already mm-hmm. established, like maybe you have races coming up. I know you plan on going to Europe to, are you still doing CCC? Uh, no, I'm registered, but I'm, I'm, uh, that was kind of like a backup option in case like stuff hit the fan at States. So, uh, not running CCC. It, it, but I can imagine that played a role in your decision-making of like, you know, which do I do? I'm, I'm ready for CCC. That's on my calendar, but. Oh, for sure. Obviously. I mean, every, everyone in my corner told me to do CCC. Really? Like, oh. I, there's a few people in Missoula, like I like to ask advice from, <clears throat> um, and every this was after JFK, which is a 50 mile that I did in November. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I was like so excited about doing states in 2022. And I would say everyone I talked to was like, they're like, dude, you're an idiot. Like do CCC. <laughs> and there, there was only like two of my friends who were like actually uh, like trying to convince me to do states. Um, but everyone else was like, no, like do canyons. That's 100K. Do CCC. That's 100K. But then... I finally realized I was like, we're just like ultra running. Like it's, it's kind of an irrational sport. And I'm like trying to rationalize like the difference between a race that's going to take 15 hours and a race that's going to take 10. Like what's the actual toll on my body. Right. Uh, and then I just decided to do States cause I was more excited about it. I mean, that's it's also awesome. Western States, you know, like sometimes yeah. it's, it's not a given that you can get in again yeah. right away or even in the next five years. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as easy. Yeah. I mean, I say, I'm talking to Adam Peterman here. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you may win every, you may win every golden ticket. tickets you attempt <laughs> to get, but you know, golden tickets, they become difficult. Like year after year, we see the difficulty just get higher and higher because the speed gets there and there's, you know, new people to the sport and stuff. And people planning their calendar specifically exactly. around trying to achieve a golden ticket to get back yeah. to Western States. So I think we're yeah, kind of just regretted it had I had I turned it down like yeah like I, I'd like to think that I'll have a like hopefully a long career but you never know like if this happens to be the year where I was like hot I'm glad like I'm glad I cooked it you know what I mean <laughs> like I'm glad I did these races then um because you could you just never know like next year who knows like I, maybe I wouldn't have qualified for states or whatever so I'm glad I just like, took advantage of the opportunity that's and honestly, dude, that's a bit of maturity talking too. like yes. that, even though you've only been ultra running since <clears throat> last year, uh, that's yeah, a- say that again, because some people who might not be familiar with Adam, Adam is n- relatively very new to the sport of ultra running, which is, I mean, okay, let's, let's, let's point this out. You ran your first ultra at speed in 2021, the 50 K you won it. You did pretty good there. You did you did quite well. Uh, mm-hmm. JFK 50 miler, bit of a different race, different style, flatter, faster. Won it, first place. Chucking up 50k. We saw that. We witnessed it, and it blew our minds. Yeah, you won it. <laughs> uh, then canyons, of course, you won as well. Got your golden ticket, and then now mm-hmm. Western States, you won. So every ultra that you've entered, you have won. That's been five in the last year. So your calendar in the last year looks like a very busy calendar for any ultra runner. I am super curious, wh- what made you take that first step into ultra? And was this longer uh, calendar sort of on your radar? Like, did you anticipate going longer and longer and longer? Was it purposeful, these choices? Um, I think like definitely, uh, yeah, like I build out a schedule when I like try to write my plan, but it I kind of was, I wasn't looking at it on like a big scale. I know people always say to like, look at it from like the 10,000 foot view, but how it happened was like, yeah, I was just like excited about Speedgoat and really excited about the Pikes Peak Marathon. Mm -hmm. And so those were going to be my summer races. And so I like trained all spring for those. Um, And then I was actually hoping to run the World Mountain Running Championships in Thailand in November. Uh, Like due to COVID, they postponed them and then postponed them again. So that like took that off the table. And so my backup plan was JFK. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually really glad that happened because JFK was like such a cool race, like uh, part of the country I'd never been to and like really great experience. Um, and then from JFK, I was like, well, I, I, I kind of want to like try for a golden ticket and or do the Canyons 100K. Like, yeah. cause to me, like going from 50 to 100K seemed logical. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how that shook out. Uh, 
yeah, just mainly because the World Mountain Running Championships got postponed. It's interesting that it kind of worked out that way where scheduling, yeah, like exterior scheduling sort of influenced your decision to to move up in distance and move forward yeah. with, with ultra. Like I always thought I'd want to run these longer distances like this, like yeah. eventually. Um, but I, how I thought my running, like trail running would go would be like, do at least like a few years of just trail marathons before actually moving up. But I like it. Like ultra is super fun and I'm excited about it. I, uh, yeah, normally we see that, you know, that 50 K progression, you try the 50 K like, Oh, that's fun. Maybe, maybe I can go further, maybe 50 mile or maybe hundred K the hundred K to hundred miler is a bit of a jump uh, distance wise, but it does sort of require that same sort of mental ability to tackle a, a long day. Mm-hmm. You, surround yourself with some pretty stellar athletes obviously you you reign from missoula montana is very well known for being a super beautiful wonderful trail community place to train we got mike foot uh all sorts of amazing i mean seth is seth in missoula or is he in bozeman he, he's there uh you never see him he runs so early i see um, him at these like <laughs> night ski races sometimes uh i saw him running on mount sentinel like two years ago when i ran really early in the morning one day but I mean, I think he runs like really early, like 5 a.m. Ew, oh. <laughs> who does yeah. that? And uh, there's like mountain lions and stuff. Like he doesn't care. It's awesome. <laughs> well, yeah. they're more scared of him. Uh, they know, like <laughs> Seth is coming. We better get out of here. <laughs> yeah. But I am curious, like your team, the people who you surround yourself with are some of the pillars of the sport who have been in, who've been in ultra for a very long time. Do they have influence on you? Do they have, do you seek knowledge from them? Like, uh, how does how does that relationship work? And how does it benefit you as an ultra runner? Because clearly it's working. Yeah, for sure. Like, so when I, uh, where I ran in high school, in Missoula, Mike Foote was the assistant coach there. Mm-hmm. And so like, that was a huge influence. Um, I remember being in high school and thinking that like, like, I just knew a lot about, I knew a lot about ultra running as a high schooler. And like, I thought Mike just had the coolest life. Um, I don't think like later on that I wanted to be an ultra runner once I ran in college, like it sounded impossible, Mm. but yeah, definitely like being around Mike and even when I was in high school, like, yeah, so Mike foot and Mike Wolf, they both lived in Missoula. So you'd, you'd see those guys running and yeah, it was just crazy what they did. Um, and then now I feel, I feel really lucky. Um, because in Missoula we have like my partner, Aaron is supported by Hoka for trail running. And one of my best friends who's been in Missoula for a while, his name is Jeff McGavro. He just got picked up by Hoka for trail running. And Chris Brown, a California guy who moved here last year, is a mm-hmm. Hoka athlete. And so alone, we have like four Hoka athletes. And on top of that, we have like this huge squad of other guys who I've been running with for a long time. And it's all like it's all trail running. Mm-hmm. Like our elite road running scene isn't really there. But like for trail, it's it's pretty cool. Like you can just pick up the phone and text the group and usually have like a buddy for a run. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great place to be. It sounds like it. And I, I mean, I remember hearing you mention foot and wolf and, and other people, uh, pillars of that community who have really inspired you and helped you along the way. There's something about Montana, man. There's something in the water besides fish that really make it stand <laughs> out. It seriously blew me <laughs> on that one, uh, but make it stand out as like, kind of a mecca for trail running you've got altitude you've got rugged like mountain gnarly wilderness. trails yeah. yeah um we have tons of live questions i want to make sure we get to as many mm-hmm. as we can during the live show yeah you just mentioned your sponsor hoka there and we have a question from our discord server from jean eves and they they mention your manager at hoka mentioned during the live feed having to rein you in a little to avoid you joining too many races are you hard to convince is racing and competing what you strive on uh, oh, that's funny. He, yeah, my, my manager definitely was another person trying to convince me to run CCC at UTMB. <laughs> um, but I told him, I was like, look, if I run States, like I won't race like all summer, like that'll be it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I'm so grateful that there, that Hoka is that way because I just know like, uh, sometimes athletes feel a lot of pressure to race all the time and it just like takes the fun out of it. It makes it like you're dealing with injuries and stress and um yeah so i yeah i don't i don't feel too much pressure to race all the time from Hoka for sure 
Um, this question is from Brian from our Discord server as well. And Brian asks, what motivates you to compete at the highest levels in trail running? And what do you hope to leave as your legacy in the community? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I've always liked, I guess, for trail running, like these are the races that I want to do. I definitely feel like, like if I'm going to run a hundred miles, then it better be like Western States or UTMB. Like that's, that's how I feel right now. That's probably, I probably won't feel that way later. Um, but like, I feel like if I'm going to be like doing something like that, that's going to completely trash your body. Like I want to do it on the biggest stage. Um, but I don't know. I, I just like the competition. Um, like I, I think I'm a competitive person, but like just when you get out there and you're racing and like, it actually becomes like, an intense race like it's is really fun and like it's there's like no better feeling than when you come out like on top uh but trail running's cool too because it's it's not always about the competition like i love i love just being out there too and like exploring places in montana um and then as far as the legacy like i think trail running's great like i was just saying like it's uh it's awesome to have the competitive aspect but then i also really like like all the places you get to see. And so I'd hope the impact on the community would just be like, yeah, like uh, for the community, I'm trying to think of the answer. I, in Missoula, I help put on a lot of different trail races and like smaller events. And so I hope people in the community, like I hope we get to create events that they get to do and like have a great time like the rut is one of the races we put on and mm -hmm. um i know that's like a really important race for a lot of people and so it's important to like have these things be for for people to do and look forward to for the year sweet uh you mentioned competition i do want to chat a little bit about uh the competition at states and the camaraderie amongst the top contenders because i feel like there is this shared you're all kind of in it together. You all know what you're about to take on at the start of Western States, a, a super rugged, hot 100 mile event. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of prestige, all that sort of stuff. Uh, before we dive into that, though, did you have an additional question that you want to ask? No, no, okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I heard in the post race interview, you kind of talking about how you did go through a bit of a rough patch, but mm -hmm. there were moments where you were able to talk to other runners and, and that sort of thing. And I'm curious, your first 100 mile experience. What did that feel like? What did the competition feel like? Did you go in with the strategy and how were you able to pull through that, that down cycle, that down part of the roller coaster? Cause you managed to clearly climb your way out of it. Yeah. I, I feel like I lucked out in my strategy. Like usually before these races, uh, like all these ultras I've done in the past year, I've like definitely analyzed the course records and like how that shook out, like what the splits were at some of the aid stations and when I started doing that for States, like, I don't know what it was, but it made me so stressed out. <laughs> like, wow. I was like, if I, if I try to run like even close to any of these times that gyms run, like maybe that'll work, but like, it might result in me just doing really, really bad. <laughs> um, and so fortunately, like I just threw that out the window and ended up just like going into it with like a pretty peaceful mentality of like, look, I'm going to run my own race like my own run, honestly, like my own hundred mm -hmm. month. Honor that that puts me on the podium. Um, but if it doesn't, like, we'll figure it out for next year. And I was actually really glad I had that mentality because it made me be uh, like really content to run with people early on. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I had like a great climb up the escarpment with Tim Tolson. And then I shared like a lot of miles with Jared Hazen and Arlen Glick. And it was cool. Like I've never been in a race where it just feels like you're on an easy day, like easy training run. Um, like, even though it was a competition, I kind of felt like all of us were like undertaking this like long journey. And I was like, yeah, this is great. Like I'm just making friends with these guys. Um, and I think that was really good. Like, like, I, like you said, I had a few, you know, like mile, 10 to 15 I felt like pretty crappy and like mile 30 to like 40 didn't feel so good and it was kind of nice like during those points to like be with people and just talk mm -hmm. to them and like 
just forget about how you actually felt and just like get through those miles. Um, I think that worked out. Like I really didn't think about competing or like even look at the splits or my watch until like mile 50. Wow. That's, that's crazy to think that, uh, there is kind of a calmness to, to the front of the pack for a bit. Like you've mentioned it feeling like a training run, right? With just some friends, you get to chat about it while in our heads or as viewers or spectators or mid packers, just kind of watching a fast race like States, it feels like everything is just rocket speed, right? Everything is like, Oh my God, they're going so fast and this and that. Yeah. But to know it's calmer than that is kind of refreshing, I guess. Yeah. I, mean, I, I felt like, like at one point, you know, it's like mile 25 and Jared Hayes and I were talking about like how expensive rent is or something like in our respective <laughs> towns. And I'm like, is this even like a race? Like, what are we, but it was good. Like it meant like we were keeping it chill. So yeah, I was okay with it. <laughs> All right. Well, note to self next ultra, make sure you can talk about rent prices before you blow up. Like, oh, I feel like that would like make the heart rate go up higher. <laughs> God, I'm getting really stressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got tons of live questions. Go for it. Yeah. So a question from Monica. Monica asks, uh, like, once you were in the lead of the race, were you running scared? Were you running confident, curious, or a mix of something else? How are you feeling once you were in the lead? Uh, it, it was a mix of both, for sure. Like, so I think I took the lead with, like, 25 miles to go. Um, and that's kind of along the river. So it was, like, pretty hot. Um, and... Like me and Hayden had kind of like pushed it pretty hard up this hill to like make that happen. Uh, like definitely the hardest I'd pushed all day. And yeah, I was definitely like, I, I felt confident, but you never know. Like, you know, you're at my like 70 and that's kind of uncharted territory for me. And so I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I feel good, but like, I still have a marathon to go. Like, so I was definitely like a little bit doubtful. I was like, did I, did I mm. push too early? Like, um, uh, but yeah, it was, I, I would say I probably was running scared. Um, I picked up my pacer at Rucky Chucky at the river crossing and yeah, I probably asked him so many times, like, Hey, he's, you look behind us. Like, is he coming? Like, I couldn't stop asking, like, is he coming? Or like <laughs> Tyler Green, he's gotta be coming. Like yeah. he's, he's closing down on us. And my pacer was Jeff McGavro. Uh, and he was like, dude, like you're, you're running really well. Like you got this, like, just keep eating. He just tell me that he's like, keep eating. You're running really well. And so that was good. Like just kind of make me stop saying that stuff. It's, uh, I, I can't, I want to talk a bit about those last 25 because we've been fortunate enough to follow a number of athletes who have been in that, uh, in the lead or, or, or near the front or in the top 10 in that section. And, it is a wild game, whether they're in first place looking back or if they're in 11th place looking forward, like it is mm -hmm. intense. So mm -hmm. we'll talk about that in a second. But I just want to point out, we have Camille Heron in the chat tonight. Yeah, Camille, uh, Camille. of course, finished, I believe, eighth uh, woman at Western States this year. And Camille says, well done, Adam, on an amazing first hundred. Yep. And uh, we also have Christian Flower Day, GR crew member who finished Western States this weekend, sub 24. First 100 miler as First well. First 100 miler mm -hmm. as well. And uh, Crispin cool. talks about how it wasn't hot along the river when he was there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. And well, uh, yeah, congrats to both of them. And yeah, c congrats, Camille. That was a huge day. Huge day. And a, a shout out, uh, Ryan Thor was in the chat earlier as well. Ryan Thor, our good friend, uh, well, co videographer, yeah. he's out there across the course taking photos and videos can't wait to see what he comes up with um stuff like that let's get to another live question yeah there's a question in the chat from andy and andy says i've heard you have a bit of a musical background and had your own youtube channel can you talk a little bit about that oh my gosh uh yeah i when i was younger i played a lot of acoustic guitar uh and then i was in band in middle school and a little bit in high school uh, playing the electric bass. So I did have a little bit of a musical background. Uh, and then briefly in middle school, I had a YouTube channel where like I, I made a didgeridoo. Do you guys know what a didgeridoo is? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I made one out of a PVC pipe with beeswax mouthpiece. I think I was in like sixth grade. And then like for some reason, one night I decided to make a YouTube video on like how I made it. Yes. And it, you know, it's like a three minute video. I think I did it in like 
one take, just filming it on my like <laughs> computer's camera, I uploaded it, whatever. And then like over the course of the next five years, it had like a hundred thousand views. <laughs> And it was like so embarrassing. I I can't even watch. I had to delete it. Like I. Oh no. <laughs> it's so awkward. Um, so hopefully that video like never surfaces again. But well, we have it right people. here. Let's bring it up. Uh, <laughs> no. It up. I was just when you were telling yeah. the story, I was like, oh, I know what I'm going to go look for as soon as we get up. Here. But now that I hear it, it's 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 deleted. It's deleted. It's gone. Um, but well, also, yeah, yeah. The, some of the high school. I used to coach high school cross country at Hellgate uh, as the assistant coach, and. Yeah, like some of the high school kids found it and they filmed it so they have it like they have a like there's a copy phone. but yeah it's, it's so embarrassing <laughs> uh well you're talking to a fellow uh band geek from when i was in high school as well uh fellow musician um i don't have a music youtube channel but i do have albums out there man and it's we should collaborate we should make we should uh collab. totally do it like didgeridoo. what did you play I played trombone, so I was a brass guy. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you mentioned so you didgeridoo. Did didgeridoo. That requires some circular breathing. Were you able to get that dialed? I did figure that out from YouTube. I even made a slide didgeridoo like from PVC pipe, like a trombone. No wonder this had a hundred thousand views. It was <laughs> yeah, like extra. That was another video how to make a slide didgeridoo. Yeah, but that I, one didn't work very well. <laughs> I guess you know the next question. Do you see yourself having a career on YouTube? Because I think this is like a perfect opportunity to, to announce your new YouTube channel, Adam. <laughs> I don't I don't think so right now. <laughs> you got it's other things going plan. on. <laughs> so I do okay, so I do want to talk about the last 25. Because you mentioned having to like look over your back and and this is this is new territory for you, just distance wise, right? So you've gotten to 62 miles, you won hundred K. Um, but having that much mileage left, there's a lot of race left. A lot can happen. And we talk about that with states all the time. Uh, a lot can happen in this last 25. What were you able to like relinquish focus and allow your pacer? Did you, did you have a pace for the last bit or did you drop him? Yep. No, no, I had him. Yeah, yeah. He okay. was with me the last 22. Were you able yeah. to relinquish some of the pressure and 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 put it on them? Um, we often talk about like the top 10 men, women often use headlamps to determine who's behind them and their strategy mm -hmm. play there with headlamps and you mm -hmm. finished in the daylight. So that's not necessarily part of the equation. So what were those last 25 like? Did you have a talk with your crew beforehand or was it in real time and was it raw and scary? Yeah, it was crazy. Like, like I was saying earlier, like I love the competition, mm. but you know, like during that moment when you had, I had 25 to go and I felt like I was being chased, like it definitely kind of sucked. Like it was really, really hard. Um, like I look back on that time and I'm like really proud of it, but yeah, that was like super tough. Mm. You know, like you have three hours where I'm like, am I going to get caught? And like, just like I made my move too early and like, right. um, but yeah, like, I think my pacer did a really good job. Like he, he's done three, three or four hundred milers himself and done really well. And so I think he knew like exactly what I was feeling. Um, and he knew like when he told me like, you're actually like, he's like, you're running really fast. Like you're doing great. Like I knew he meant it because he'd been there too. Mm. Um, not at States, but at other, at his other hundred milers he'd done. Um, yeah. So I think he did a good job too. Because even though, like, say you're at mile 80 and you have 20 to go, like, it still, it seems really far to run 20 miles. Sure. Like, just because you've run 80, it doesn't take away the fact that you still have 20. Um, and he did a good job just being like, dude, like, get to Green Gate. That's two miles. Get to the next one. That's five. Um, get to the next one. That's four. Like, I remember being like, okay, four miles, four miles, and two miles. Like, I can do that. And he's yeah. like, yeah, dude, yeah, you got this. Um, so I was like super grateful for him to have him there. But yeah, like I remember I didn't, I didn't have any like really rough patches at the end. Um, I think he started to recognize at mile 90 that I was getting a little bit in the calorie hole. And he was just like, dude, like let's eat some of your gummies, like take a gel, drink your Roctane and drink whatever. Um, and Fortunately, like that rough patch at mile 90, like went away pretty quickly and we were able to get back on track. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I was asking like every aid station for updates and they, they didn't have them. Like 
those yeah. aid stations down there, like you're in the dark. So yeah, that whole time up until mile 94, like I, I didn't know. So it was definitely like scary. <laughs> I mean, that's a hard part about states. There's signal in very few places and getting info in real time is difficult. But as viewers now with this live stream, we sort of see trackers and we see some splits and it's, you know, we know, but we can't communicate that to anybody other than just yeah. like, oh man, is he, is he going to be able to keep this going? And yeah you're gonna get caught you just don't know that's that's gotta and we've be seen, spicy. we've obviously seen uh, this 100 mile race at western states come down to a literal sprint around sprint, the track sprint around the track before. caitlin german yeah. yeah caitlin when we film caitlin's here um i we have so much that i still want to chat about but of course we are sort of getting towards that 40 45 minute uh mark of our main show uh with our wonderful guest adam peterman or as our coach david roach likes to refer to him adam peter god uh we are all <laughs> mortals here in the presence of greatness uh but maybe let's get to one more live question then we'll do our trivia question for a spot at the rut and then we'll do our quickie question quiz yeah, that sounds good. A uh, question from Rowan in the chat. Uh, they asked if you had any advice for someone who might be running their very first time at Western States. Oh, man, I would say just focus on, I would get a great crew. Like, I was so lucky. I had a great crew. It was like some of my best friends who live in Missoula, like, all showed up. Um, and so I think that was great. Like we dialed in a great plan, you know, we had like spreadsheets and everything. And so we were well organized, but then they kept it really fun. Like at the end of the day, like I was doing it cause it sounded fun. And so, um, yeah, I would focus on getting a great crew and, oh, the other thing for me was like to never think about how far you actually have to go, but how far you have to go until the next aid station. Cause when you're at mile, like, 10 i found it hard to think that i had 90 to go but i could totally think of like oh, i can go to the next aid and you just have to do that like 20 times and then you're done that's it <laughs> just, just like 20 more times just 20 more times <laughs> and then you're done. doing it over and over again it's you know it's like you look at 100k and it's only 10 10 k's only 10, 10 so you only have 10 k's uh, and a couple of mountains to cover yeah. well i mean adam it, you are fun to watch uh we were very fortunate to see you in person at chuck and you were super fun to see just blaze through that course but even more fun to watch at states just because you nailed it what i also want to add i did have you we did we do a daily live stream for our patreon crew this and i true. did have you in my top three. Oh, sweet <laughs> what, what was i which one i think i had you uh in my third place uh slot sweet I that, that wasn't based on the fact that I didn't think you were fast. It was based on the fact that I was like, oh, this is Adam's first 100 miler. We'll see how this goes. 100%. But... That was it. It was just like anyone running their first 100. It's always an unknown. It's a complete unknown. Yeah. I mean, for you, obviously, I'm sure admittedly you'd be like, yeah, it's 100 miles. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> but I mean, yeah. that's sort of what makes this really special, Adam, is that one, it hasn't happened at States in decades. Um, but it's it's such a great example of what a human can do while still having fun and enjoying it like you didn't yeah. go out and blow up and then have this struggle bus for the whole race but still won like you had a what sounded like a great experience at one of the best biggest races on earth and it's such a cool such a cool thing to see and experience but get to chat with you about and we really appreciate your time yeah. tonight man no thanks so much yeah it was uh yeah it was unbelievable like yeah, the last like mile running it in with everyone and like running around the track, like I, it didn't even feel like it was me like running, you know? So yeah, I'll definitely never forget it. It was, it was really, really special. And another sort of perk with the live stream this year is that you'll be able to go back and watch it and you'll be able to hear both Dylan and Corinne just yeah. like, Adam Peterman coming in! <laughs> you know, just that, that joy and that stoke, which they're obviously very well they're known so, for. They're so nice to me. <laughs> they're, they're very good people. Yeah. Uh, Adam, we have a couple things here. One, we're gonna give away a race entry to the rut. Can you describe what the rut is? I mean, you work for the rut. Tell us a bit about it. Uh, it's obviously a badass mountain race, but what else? What, what should we look forward to with yeah. the rut? Yeah, it's a great uh, badass Montana trail race. We have uh, four different races over race weekend. It's in Big Sky, Montana, um, but we have a vertical kilometer, an 11K, a 28K, and a 50K. So it's like a whole celebration trail fest. Um, and this is actually our 10th year. Um, but yeah, it's they're really gnarly courses. Um, 
the 28 Ks. So that's 17 miles. It has like almost 8,000 feet of climbing. And then the 50 K is like a little bit more runnable, but it still is pretty close to 11,000 feet of climbing. Um, wow. And all those races, except the 11 K top out on Lone Peak, which is an 11,000 foot mountain up there. And it's like pretty technical, great view from the top. And yeah, the courses are awesome. They were designed by uh, Mike Foote and Mike Wolf. So you know that they're, they're pretty hard. Yeah. yeah a little bit a little difficult uh the pictures yeah. look incredible um super stunning terrain and and lone peak looks both tough uh, doable but like super tough and exposed and fun uh so here's how we're going to do this this is a giveaway for any of the rut races um the winner of this will receive that entry we'll just be in touch with them uh so if we're going to do a trivia question the first correct answer in our live chat room will win the entry and that will be i have a live chat room here kim has a live chat yeah, room. yeah that is based on i know this happens every time we do a giveaway it's based on our our live, live chat because you we'll may see it. see it in a different order depending on how fast or slow your internet is yeah uh, but we have it accurately here uh, so the first correct answer on this trivia question will receive the entry if you are the winner all you have to do is email me the ginger at gingerrunner.com and we'll say that again once we announce our winner um and then we're going to do the quickie question quiz with adam here as well so the trivia question's uh pretty easy we'll see <laughs> adam peterman our guest tonight has I've run the rut before mm. one of the distances at the rut in fact he has run the vertical kilometer at the rut before what was adam peterman's finishing time for the rut vertical k what minutes was his and seconds minutes and seconds <laughs> the fact that it doesn't include hours it just shows you how fast it was uh but minutes and seconds how fast did adam peterman run his very first vertical kilometer at the rut the first correct answer in the chat room will win a race entry courtesy of onyx backcountry to the rut you get to choose which distance you want to do and it is for this year's rut and it is not deferable uh it is for this coming fall uh sam mm. that is the incorrect answer one two three four is not it 12 close. minutes and 34 seconds close oh boy people, people oh boy not quite oh i'll let you keep your eye on the chat uh i might jump into the quickie question quiz uh unless we see the correct answer here I'm, I'm whoa, 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 whoa. Was this in 2019 or 2021? Uh, the very first time you ran it. So 2019. 2019. Oh. Ooh, I don't even know, Ooh, actually. We have it. Do we have it? Yeah. I see it. Is this the correct one yep. that you see on your yep. end? That's the one I got. Congratulations to Bettina Kohler with a 57 minute and 12 second correct answer. Oh, that yeah. That is it. But also, uh, honorable mention to Benjamin, who guessed five minutes and 34 seconds. <laughs> that would be, be impressive. I think that's the tram. Uh, possibly, I don't know if there's a tram up to the top, but uh, congratulations, Bettina. You just won yourself a entry to any of the rut distances for this year. That's super awesome. We're stoked uh, that you got that. So maybe you could run the vertical K. And if you run yeah, faster yeah. than Adam ran it his first time. Um, then you can tell Adam you ran it faster than him. <laughs> I'll, buy, I'll buy him a beer. Uh, Adam will give you his cougar from Western <laughs> States. Is that not? Uh, yeah. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Bettina. Drop us an email, the ginger at ginger. Yeah, and Benjamin confirms I had lots of faith in Adam. A lot of five faith. minute finish, five minute finish, uh, super fast. So Adam, this is a segment we do on our show for all first time guests of ginger runner live. It's very easy. It is a rapid fire series of questions when you are ready to tackle them. Oh, it's just first answer that comes to your head. Uh, okay. when you are ready to tackle them, give me the thumbs up and we'll dive on in. I'm ready. Okay. Very <laughs> first race. Uh, I, I think it was called like the kids. It was like the Dairy Queen kids run in Missoula. I love Had a good dilly bar. Anything with Dairy Queen so. involved. Yeah. Anything with Dairy Queen. Favorite, wrong favorite place to run currently. Uh, in Missoula, it'd be Mount Sentinel. That's my favorite place to run. Road or trails? Uh, trails right now. Bucket list race. Uh, bucket list race. I would love to do one of the UTMB races in the near future at, in Europe. Yeah. Favorite running movie. Oh, the Prefontaine one. I don't know which Prefontaine, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, guilty pleasure TV show. I really liked breaking bad. That was great. That was good. Yeah. Uh, favorite pre-race meal. Hmm. 
you, yeah, usually it's just like rice and vegetables. Really simple. Uh, yeah, it's simple. Favorite post-race meal? Uh, this year, burgers. Yeah. And finally, what are your current running kicks? What did you run Western States in? I was wearing the speed go. Yeah. Which ones? The fives or the fours? I wore the five. Yeah. Congratulations, Adam. You just passed the quickie yeah. question quiz. Flying colors. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> uh, I also want to give you a chance, Adam, to let people know where they can find you, follow you, uh, where they can find out more information about what you got coming up and stuff like that. So take it away. Yeah, I'm on Instagram. Uh, my handle is Adam Peterman underscore. It's all one word. Um, and then I'm on Strava as well. And that's just Adam Peterman, my name. Sweet. Our guest tonight has been the wonderful Adam Peterman, or as David Roach calls him, Adam Peter God. Uh, he is an <laughs> incredible athlete. We're so fortunate to have him on the show, especially so fresh after Western States 100. Uh, he's coming to us on his journey back to Missoula, so we're very thankful that he was able to carve out some time for us. So GR crew, people who are uh, watching this live or listening to the podcast, please go show Adam some love. Thank him for being on the show because it was uh, super special, and we were very excited about that. Uh, GR crew member, mm -hmm. we would like to recognize members of the community who got uh, out there and crush some stuff this week. And we call it our GR crew members of the week. We get to recognize members who faced challenges and conquered some pretty awesome things out there. Kim, who are our GR crew members of the week? This week's GR crew member of the week, we've already mentioned them in this show, but I want to give a shout out to Crispin Flower Day. Crispin ran Western States this past weekend as well. It was Crispin's first 100 miler also. Yeah. And Crispin managed a sub 24 hour finish. Amazing finish. Uh, so congratulations to Crispin and all of our GR crew members who got out there and raced. We had a bunch of really amazing performances this weekend. So we appreciate all of you uh, getting out there and training hard, racing harder, and of course, partying the hardest. That's going to wrap it up for GRL 404. We're going to move right into our after show with Adam. So we have him sticking around for just a couple of minutes. We'll ask some remaining questions. Uh, join the GR crew patreon.com slash the ginger runner you get access to this after show which we're about to go into uh and a bunch of other fun perks thanks all so much for tuning into tonight's show we'll see you next week thanks everyone thanks everyone bye bye